please join with me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing we have is a public hearing, RSA 674, semicolon um, 40-A, to accept the following streets as class five highways in the town of Hampton, RSA 674-40, to accept the following named streets as class B highways, Barron Road, Carlson Road, Cuss Lane, East Mall Lane, Esker Road, Hilda Drive, Hutchinson Street, Jeffrey Drive, Oak Street, Pine Street, Rings Terrace, Tucker Lane, and Victor Road. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, our research indicates that these streets have never been accepted as Class 5 highways. They are all eligible. They've all been approved by the Planning Board. We have documented the date on which the Planning Board had approved their acceptance, and in accordance with the statute, the selectmen can accept them as town highways. Make a motion that we accept those streets. First of all, I want to hear a comment from the uh, public as it's a public hearing. Is there anybody on the public that would like to speak on this? Anybody on the public that would like to speak on this hearing? Bring it back to the board. Make a motion that we accept them. A motion by Jim, second, second by Regina. All those in favor? Unanimous. The next part is public comment period. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak? Yes, come on up. I noticed that on here, um, under 3B traffic issues, it doesn't mention Tide Mill Road. I believe so a neighbor sent a letter in requesting it to be part of this forum. Um, I don't know if it was, it's not, it wasn't, wasn't supposed to be part of this when, when this was scheduled. This was for um, that other part of town. Okay. But again, this is a public comment section of the meeting, so... Uh, Can I say something right now? Sure. Okay. I don't know how this works. <laughs> okay, that's okay. All right. I recently received, along with the entire neighborhood, um, a letter from one of the neighbors that was very concerned regarding the tractor, the 18-wheel track, the 18 -wheel tractor trailers going down, I believe, Tide Mill Road. I believe it had been addressed before, and the town put up signs, um, but they're not clear. So you still have the 18-wheelers going down Tide Mill which goes around to, um, what's it called, Hartnitz? Hart Hartnitz. Hart yes, thank you. <laughs> um, where it's all businesses. So I guess on Tide Mill, there's many children. Um, I'm only here because of the children. Um, I, mine are gone. <laughs> they're all grown and gone. Um, but I do see what they're talking about with all the, the big tractor trailers, kids playing outside. Um, they just go down the road. Um, me personally, I don't think... Um, speed bumps would be appealing, but one solution that I thought of was um, having the, all right, if anybody, any business people are here, sorry, um, having the business, the local businesses be responsible to send all their vendors um, a letter and certify, uh, certify it return receipt. The businesses have to send it to the town and show that they're trying to do something. Um, and if they don't comply, start charging them a fine to comply. And I think that will give some kind of, and again, this is only referring to tractor trailers, not like the regular in and out businesses. So that's my say. <laughs> I know there's a lot of other people here that live on that road. <coughs> Thank you. Sure. Go oh, oh, wait, hold on a second. I'll let the uh, police chief speak here. I know that uh, Tide Mill Road wasn't on the agenda, but I have no problem talking globally. If we can talk specifically about that, but globally about moving forward with traffic issues in town as part of that discussion, if that helps. Thank you, sir. It shouldn't take long, but some of the ideas I'm hearing because of some of the things that have been spurred by the conversation, uh, we're going to work on. So. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Jean Penn. I live at 2 Tide Mill. The first year we moved in there, I had a Christmas tree. And because when the big tractor trailers put their brakes on, it knocked the Christmas tree down. So I've had to go to a smaller Christmas tree to artificial. I've had my mailbox hit 
what I'm questioning is another solution. This is a side road. Could we have a yellow line put on there? And if so, when they turn the corner, they are on the wrong side of the road. That's the only way that they can make that turn. They can sit in my driveway and arrest those trucks. Can anybody tell me about the side road? Can we have a yellow line strip? Well, this is the public comment part of it. That would be the t something. Anything like traffic and stuff would I would suggest you wait till we have our our meeting with the police chief. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else like to speak at public comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Regina. I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. Nothing this evening. Phil. Negative, sir. Rick. No. The only thing I have is. Uh, uh, I would like to send our condolences out to Mary Louise Wolseley in the passing of our daughter, Sarah. Sarah fought a long, courageous battle with colon cancer and passed away this, this past week. And I uh, want to send our condolences on to her. Consent agenda. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I request that we uh, remove Logan's run from the consent agenda and to take it up later on in the meeting. Okay. Anything else? Any other problems with the consent agenda? It is a seafood vendor's permit. It uh, seafood should be seafood festival vendor permits. Uh, parade and public gathering license. And municipal work zone agreement with DOT. Move that we accept the consent agenda. Second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments. Christy Pullman. Okay. Monthly financials. Good evening. I am here uh, with the seventh report for the month of July 2016. The month's target was 58.33%. The month's total income was $770,559. Of that total, motor vehicles, motor vehicles came in at $248,445. This is over the adjusted month's target by $445. The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at $10,117, building permits at $26,677, highway subsidy at $95,924, departmental income at $50,000. $85,476, parking lots at 175171 and the real estate trust at $90,961. The expense summary shows that the year-to-date expenses by department at the end of July, the operating departments without debt service but with open POs were 57.2% of the budget which is under the month's target by 1.13% or $273,375. Uh, this gap has closed considerably compared to the 916000 that I had reported in June. Um, we predicted that that would happen, though, with the summer season really getting underway. Overall, the departments as a whole are running under the target of 58.33%. This month, I will report on each major section that makes up the budget and where it is in relation to the month's target. I will report um, them as a percentage of budget, including all of the open purchase orders. The executive section is at 56.76%. Election registration and vital statistics is at 54.4%. Financial administration is at 50.68%. Legal is at 54.97%. Personnel administration is at 54%. Planning and zoning is at 58.46%. This is related to um, the planning uh, section being over target at 58.95%. General government build, building is at 49.71%. Cemeteries is at 54.55%. Municipal insurance is at 65.7. Uh, this is caused by the annual payments for workers' compensation and general liability, uh, property liability, which was paid uh, July 1. Those are just paid once a year now with the, our new carrier, Primex. 
Parking administration is at 58.82%. Um, the season is almost over there, so there shouldn't be any problems with that department. The police department is at 55.77%. Uh, the fire station is at 56.69%. Building and code inspection is at 51.4%. Emergency management um, is at 598%, but that's a $1,000 line item, and it's mostly related to we have to redo the hazard mitigation plan every five years, I believe, and we are um, in the process of doing that. We have a grant that will offset a lot of the cost of that. So we'll be getting reimbursed for that, um, the money in that line item. Other services, hydrants is at 97.03%. We just made our second payment, second and final payment for the year on that, for the hydrants. Highways and streets is at 46.3%. Municipal sanitation is at 56.71%, and the Public Works Department as a whole is at 52.37%. Animal control is at 5386 <coughs> Mosquito control is at 49.04%. Welfare is at 55.66%. And I just noted there that um, we've seen an increase in the public assistance in, for rent in that um, her department's been pretty slow lately, but it's really been picking up. I think she's up to like 11,000 in rental assistance. Culture and recreation is at 53.13%. Um, library is at 59.58. Patriotic purposes is at 114.73%. Conservation is at 50.46. On, on page 15, you'll see the list of the Warren articles passed at town meeting and the activity that is going on um, with a lot of those projects. 2015 encumbrances are showing that 79% of those have been expended to date. Since this report was done, I know that a couple more items have been completed off of that list, so that will even be closer to 100% soon. Uh, fund 24, which is the recreation fund, the balance is $173,467. The beach sticker donations year to date equal 10980 with 16,442 being um, given out in scholarships. Fund 25, the cable committee, the fund balance is $99,401. Fund 26 for private detail, the current balance is 117,412. Fund 27 of the EMS fund, the balance is 336,782. And the wastewater system development charge, uh, the fees collected in 2016 totaled $42,036 with a balance of $156,661. And on that report, I have added a couple of lines on the bottom to show different projects that have been approved by the board but not expended yet. So you guys get a uh, better understanding of that. And that is all I have. Virginia. Thank you very much, Christy. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for the update, and I don't have any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. You do a good job keeping us up to date. I have a question. Comparing revenue of January, July of 2015 to now, we're behind on that. Reason for that? Under by 2,000? Let's see. Under by 2,000. I would go back and say that in 2015, we had um, that large reimbursement from Health Trust of like right. 200 and something right. thousand dollars. So I think that's going to hold us behind for, hold us a little bit behind for most of this year until we start getting those state payments that come in towards the end of the year, like the rooms and the meals and all of those, um, yeah. those different, that's like a couple of wastewater pollution grants that we get from the state, and we'll be getting those too. Right. So. And as you look at revenue and projections of revenue, revenue, and you think we'll hit the target yeah. on everything. Yeah. And I will be reevaluating those at the end of August because by September 1, you have to submit your estimated revised estimated revenues to the state before they set the tax rate. So I will be looking at that again. Okay, okay, good. And then I just noticed that in some of the individual departments, overtime is still a large percentage in a lot of them. Correct. And we, we keep an eye on that. And I think, once again, though, that's a lot of it um, picked up in July especially. So we'll have July, August, maybe a little bit of September, and then it'll kind of level out, hoping we get no snow. Okay, thank you. Right? <laughs> yeah. No thank snow? You, yeah. No questions. Okay. Sure. No, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, excellent job as always. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Chris Jacobs, Public Works Director. Jen Hale, Deputy Public Works Director. Good 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. So our first uh, Fisher Cat today, live. Oh, cool. In person, the ACO officer brought it by on its way, hopefully out of town. <laughs> Where was it? It was caught on uh, Drakeside Road. Bring it back up to Milton, Chris. We're blocked. <laughs> he wanted to put it in my car, but it wasn't really happy. But I'd never seen one that close, so wow. <clears throat> kind of the highlight of the day. Did it make noise? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure it did. But it didn't show any fear. It, it didn't seem like it cared that there were people around or anything like that. It was interesting. It knew it was the tough guy on the block. <laughs> so you put your finger close to the cage, then it really <laughs> got excited. So... Um, First thing on the agenda was that for us to talk about was the TAP grant. Jennifer's been doing 99% uh, of the work on that. Um, went to the meeting, so I'll let her fill you in. Uh, basically, through the budget committee and uh, through these meetings uh, last year, we heard, you know, have you gone after any grants? Is there anything out there for sidewalks? We see other people doing it. Um, the TAP grant did come across our plate. It is a reimbursable grant uh, given by... An HDOT using federal funds uh, that allows to do an 80-20. Um, they give the 80%, we give the 20% for projects uh, that are approved through their uh, selection process. So working with the SAU, um, they had done a whole Safe Routes to School travel plan uh, that identified areas in town, especially areas where we have children walking and where we're encouraging them to have safe routes um, within the community. Uh, this travel plan identified areas that could use significant improvement um, or sidewalks where they were missing and those type of things. So working with the SAU, we put in a pre-application package. Uh, that pre-application -ac package uh, was accepted. We went up to a mandatory meeting in Concord to discuss the application itself, which is due uh, September 2nd. And we're looking to put in uh, an application on behalf of the town of Hampton working with the SAU for a million dollars. Uh, the million dollars would include basically a whole streetscape uh, roadway improvement uh, along Winnicunit Avenue from the center school down to Mill. So that would basically connect up Lafayette Road, bring everybody down Winnicunit, have Mill to go up, and then on to High Street. Uh, the second part is there's a section of sidewalk missing from Five Corners uh, to Toby Street. There's no sidewalk on the north side. There's only the uh, south side. So it would also include that section. Um, those two areas were um, strongly flagged, highly identified in the Safe Routes to School Travel Plan. And the criteria in which the grants are uh, given, one of them is what's the basis. Uh, and one of them is that have you prepared a Safe Routes to School Plan. So we feel we're positioned very well um, but a large component is having the support, having the town support, that this is a good idea, that this is something um, where us as the town and us as the school district uh, have an opportunity to team together, uh, fund the 20% together, uh, come warn article time, uh, and go through and actually do a full design and construction. So the money is for design and construction of the improvements. It's something that would be submitted, as I said, in September. They would make the selection process in December, and then it would go to March vote in March. If it is approved by the town and we were selected uh, on the list, that's when uh, the work would start beginning on the design and everything like that. So they're fully aware that um, many towns have to go through this process uh, to get the matching funds. So with that said, I'm really here tonight to just see if that's all something the board supports. Uh, I'd love to write a letter saying that our board uh, supports submitting this uh, grant opportunity, for lack of better words, and um, do it with the uh, SAU. Uh, Kathleen Murphy is going to be writing a letter on behalf of her board uh, as well to show a letter of support, and that attached with some plans that have already been done up uh, with the travel plan that identify sidewalks, bicycling, safety improvements, um, traffic calming, all those things that uh, would create that safe routes. That's what we're looking to do. Uh, sure. I, uh, pending further discussion, make the motion that we uh, support the uh, submission of the sidewalk tap grant in conjunction with uh, uh, Superintendent uh, 
uh, from the SAU 90s uh, efforts. Second. Is there any other conversation on this the board wants to have? Um, I just, did you have something? No, I mean, I think we. Should, I think it's something that we should definitely do. I yeah. agree with Phil. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's really super into work cooperatively with the school on this safe sidewalks. I think it's a great idea. Any idea what the cost would be for something like this? So right now, the two projects that I mentioned from uh, Center School down to Mill and the section from Five Corners uh, to Toby, it could have anywhere from a price tag of 900000 to $1.3 million. Um, like any design, you have to go through the motions, find out what we're going to need, what the town as a whole wants. This would not obviously be the last time we have a discussion on this, you know, as we get into the plans. Um, the max loan there grant that we could apply for is a million. So that is what we're going to be looking to do. Okay. Thank you. So is this from Senate School or is this from uh, Route 1 down to Miller? Right now, we're calling it from center because they have the plan. Uh, the SAU already put out a sidewalk bid uh, to go out there. Um, that's still up in the air in the works. Just It's been out to bid twice. Uh, so right now, we're including it, that project to mill. If that project becomes separate, which they have some of the funding, we have a way to work the exact area, and that will come all down to the funding that's available and those type of things. But this addresses shortcomings like in the area of the fire station. Uh, with sidewalks, um, like I said, all the way down through, and it curbings and everything for the whole, exactly. whole road, not and just a sidewalk. It's going to be the whole. And they do. They call it a, a streetscape plan. I mean, you're looking, you know, at your trees. You're looking at the curbing. You're looking at the safety. How do you keep the sidewalk separated? You're looking at let's not create throughways, but roadways, so that it doesn't become, you know, this is that straightaway. Let's fly across here. We are very fortunate to have the center school near the town hall next to the library near the fire station and then have the academy and it really is going to provide this linkage that is not uh, currently there okay well we have a motion and a second all those in favor unanimous why thank you okay all right the second item that we wanted to discuss with the board tonight is uh, the acquisition of asset management software um, those that don't are not familiar with the terminology or what that is, is basically would be our operating software similar to what I'm sure the police have a tracking software that tracks all their calls and their reports and situations that they deal with, and the same with the fire department, because I know that every time they come in and do a report, they can tell you a number of calls. Uh, number of broken ankles, twisted fingers, so they obviously keep track of all that data. We have the same situation, but we do it in a very um, <clears throat> presently archaic method, i.e. the spreadsheet method. Um, we do keep track of all of our, uh, our complaints. Um, we also have a work order system. Essentially what we're trying to do is acquire a piece of software that allows us to bring all that together. It will also allow us to use the town's GIS system that where some of you have gone on the website where you can literally call up the town map, hover in on a street, and look at each house. And right now, the only things that are available to you would be the property card and or the assessment review. Um, what assess asset management does is it takes that mapping database plus all the information that we have brings it all together so that when we as a department would hover over a property, we'd actually be able to look at sewer tie card, water information if we have it, whether it has uh, on its own septic system, whether it has a well, all that data would be uh, combined together. The good news is we've been meeting with um, this, uh, Wright Pierce, our engineer, and with um, Sharon Rivard from NHDES uh, since March um, and we've applied for made a pre-application uh, for a $30,000 grant uh, with total really is 60000 and 30000 of it would be an automatic forgiveness. They've told us that they didn't give out all the in money that they had for uh, 2015 uh, so our essentially our pre-application has already been approved. Uh, it's awaiting, if you will, a letter from 
you folks saying you're in support of it, um, then they would allow us to access that uh, that grant money, and then months later there would be that forgiveness letter. So um, the other thirty thousand we would be looking to use is for um, tablets because this is a cloud-based option. We'd be able to give out tablets to the sewer department, uh, sewer and drain division, um, Frank, so that when um, a catch basin gets cleaned in the field, they literally open this up, this catch basin's clean, close the report, close the work order. It's really going to help us in the future when it comes to do our, uh, our annual report to the EPA about our stormwater management. It's going to be able to show that we cleaned this many literally with the press of a button, hopefully. Um, it'll spit out all that information that right now we spend, I would bet, on Jennifer's time and when I did it, it's two solid weeks of time trying to put together that annual report because a lot of it is just data gathering. You have to document how many catch basins cleaned, how many streets, miles of streets swept. Um, it goes on and off. So this software package will allow us to hopefully us to do more, uh, cut down on how much we're spread thin. Um, and uh, we're basically just looking for your approval to proceed forward with or give uh, Fred the approval to accept this grant money. And then um, we go forward. That's basically it. Any questions from the board? Other towns that are using this? Software. Exeter is uh, had a different program. They're going to the program that we want to use called People GIS. Uh, Seabrook also has the same program called People GIS. Okay. The good thing, uh, one of the good things about this particular piece of software is um, we can give to Seabrook and they can give to us. Uh, you can basically set up user accounts and we give them their own password. And what we would share with them is, for instance, if we did. Like we're doing water quality tests at Tide Mill Creek, where it goes under 101. That data is should be available to them because when they try to complete their MS4 report, that's one of the things that they'll be looking for. So it would, if they do them on their side of the river, it would eliminate us having to do them. If they'll share the information. In the same right, we would share that information with them. Some of the other information would not be that we set up a basically a menu. Menu, they wouldn't be able to see things that we didn't want them to see. For instance, landfill reports or uh, number of catch basins we cleaned. If they want to see it, they could call. We could turn it on. They could look at it. The other great thing is um, there's some 800 communities around the U.S. that are already using this piece of software. Um, there's 8,000 different forms available. It's because it's cloud-based. All those forms, all those methodologies of doing things are already instantly available to us. So as part of the software package, they, this people GIS would come in and merge all of our data together for us. Uh, and the person that we've interviewed for our engineering tech position, uh, he has to complete his current job. He'll be here till November. Um, he has GIS experience. So that's why this is all coming together right now. We're finally putting the person, the software, the money all together because we want to hit the ground running with this. We're going to start with one department and then slowly bring in all the other departments. And the cost, the savings in, in time would be? Exponential. I mean, the non... My favorite example is a street sign needs to go up and we all have the conversation here we get the paperwork signed the street sign goes up then we give it to Frank Frank has Pete or whoever's doing signs that day go put it in here's how it works with the software he goes he puts it in it has a point it has a GPS location he takes a picture of it it's the proof is in the pudding the picture's there a map will populate what year it was done all these forms what year it was put in is it the reflective is it MUCCD all this other great size, all that stuff. Now it's, he goes, he puts it up, someone steals it, did you put it up? Yeah, I put it up, it was gone two days later. It's this back and forth, or you have to literally go down and drive it. This is something that 
from Frank, myself, to Chris, it's pulling up the program. It, it will be right there, and that's just one example. The catch basin cleaning, the testing. The Great thing on one of the work orders, one of the options is we can set you all up as email notification. So if you had a particular resident call you and said, hey, the Maplewood street sign is down. Once he puts it back up, takes the photo of it, closes the work order, it automatically sends to me, to Jennifer, to anyone we put on the list, and to you, if you were an interested party to the work order, the work orders, it's done. You could call your constituent and say, hey, the work, order, the work is done. Um, right now, Fred calls me and says, hey, is the sign up? She says, I call Frank. Oh, he's out today, or he's busy. I can't get a hold of Pete. Um, what do I do? I get in the car, drive over to Maplewood. Yep, signs up. Okay, then I go back and I type out an email. Fred signs up. You know, and that's that's the archaic way that we're dealing with some of this stuff sometimes. So, yeah. so we're sort of operating 1970 or 1980, and we yeah, just have a lot of pieces everywhere. This is a consolidation as well. I mean, we have road inventories, condition assessments, what types of pipes we have, signs that are out there. You know, roads that have been accepted. This is very. Um, it, it's going to grow. I mean, you have the base there, and that's what you know doing. And we interviewed three different companies. This was not just, you know, oh, we heard about these we people. We looked at ViewWorks, same price. We looked at People GIS. We looked at Facility Dude. It was the price of a Yugo. You get what you pay for. So they're 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 out there in, in various ranges, but the the better ones are the ones that. The ones that suit all. our needs. Yeah. Right, and suit our needs. Yeah. So with the grant, it would cost us what? Zero for the software. Okay. And, then and then for the for the other portion of the software, when we buy, let's say, a server, or we buy the tablets, I would end up paying for that out of my budget because it's going to, and sewer and drain will pay some, uh, wastewater will pay some, highway will pay some, I'll get the rest. Let's do all pay because we're all going to benefit from it. Good. So we need a motion to. I'll make a motion that we have them proceed with, proceed the, grant with the grant process. Yeah. Second. Second. All those in favor? By the way, while you're talking about street signs, Auburn Ave is down. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention to the board, and I wrote it on which piece of paper? Oh, my agenda. Stormwater coalition. That one's coming up. Yeah. I'll let Jen jump on that. But just to give you an update, uh, because we have the more on, on camera, uh, paving status or the current condition of the paving. Uh, driftwood, Maplewood, Forest, Cedarview, and Landing Road, everything west, has already been shimmed and brought back up to, to grade. Uh, in the next couple of days, the uh, people will be playing Pokemon with the uh, all the uh, sewer manholes will be raised back to, to cover, and they'll be... I mean, is it Super Mario or Pokemon? That's one of the ones you, where you try to avoid it. Huh? Frogger. Frogger. Oh, sorry. My kids would have known that. I wouldn't have. Uh, and Watson is also prepped. So um, I've really been pleased with how much uh, attention GMI has given to it and also how much equipment that they brought to the, to the, uh, to the scene. Uh, when they've started work, they're really just going gangbusters. Uh, I even saw one selectman on Friday night. Uh, they were going right till well six o'clock, and it was good to see. They really, you know, this is how they make their money, and they it isn't by dilly dallying. So, and it's our second year with them. We've been very pleased. I did see old stage road. They did a nice job. Yes, down that was the other. Yes, they did a really nice yep. job down there. Really cleaned that up because that was all washed out down there. And it's Beautiful now. I yep. rode, drove that Friday. Yeah, forgotten about that one. Back to Jen. All right, the last one on um, the agenda tonight was the stormwater management. It's a collaborative compliance project. Uh, the short version of this is that we've been attending uh, the Seacoast Coalition uh, stormwater meetings, and this is all in preparation for the new uh, federal MS4 permit that we've all heard so much about. Uh, Mass's permit is in effect. Everything is leading that it is coming out the door in the fall. Um, we'll have one year to meet the first year's deadline in compliance. Um, articles have been written and opinions have been done that you're talking half a million dollars over the next five years um, to implement all the new 
uh, regulations that are coming. With that said, the Southeast Watershed Alliance has said, well, wait, can we share resources? You know, if one town's already put together a stormwater management plan, which is one of the things that you have to do, you know, can it be a document, so say one consultant does it, can it be a document that can be passed from town to town to town so that everybody's not starting creating the wheel from scratch? So what they've done is the Southeast Watershed Alliance has decided to um, basically enter a relationship with each of these towns using the Stormwater Management Collaborative Compliance Project as the first start, this being the first project that all the towns would uh, do together. What we're looking to do is spend $2,000 from our um, MS4 section of our budget to enter into an agreement uh, with the Southeast Watershed Alliance, which will actually be held by the, Trans. yeah, S, I get all the acronyms, S-E-W-A. Basically, one person will hold all the money uh, because the coalition doesn't have the right Southeast to hold money. Southeast Watershed Alliance. Um, and that will hire the first, um, they'll put an RFQ out uh, for, you know, a qualified company to come in and do exactly what it is we need to do to put that stormwater management plan together. Um, we think it is extremely important that we're all collaborating, just as the asset management, being able to share information from town to town, learning from other people's trips, and being able to help other towns. Uh, this is certainly not one of those uh, better than you scenarios. We're all gonna be in the same um, permit pit, for lack of better words, trying to dig our way out the first year. Uh, so just sort of wanted to um, explain to you that's what we wanted to do. There is an agreement here. We'd ask, you know, Mark to review it. Uh, Dover has signed theirs. Uh, they were the first ones uh, to sign the agreement. Uh, once this goes through, Mark, uh, to review the language, it's very simple. It's just an agreement that we are going to be part of this collaborative approach, um, that we would get it signed uh, by you guys, come back once the agreement's done and then present them with the check uh, to be part of the collaboration. Questions from the board? So moved. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, who else is in on this? Just so the people know on the watch Dover. camera. Uh, Rochester. Silver, Silver, Durham, Exeter. Thank you. Portsmouth, Rochester, Summersworth, and the University of New Hampshire. And how far are we along with the man, with a, a, a a management plan. This is really the first step. Okay. This what is. we what we wrestled with an early on, and this is it's when you're working a group of this size, that many towns, it can be very laborious. Uh, another group did it down in Massachusetts, and one town volunteered to do all the paperwork. Another town volunteered to handle all the money. Uh, we realized how difficult that was going to be because some of our government entities are council form, some of them are strong manager form, some of them are board of selectmen. Uh, that's where the Southeast Watershed Alliance came in. They've been duly authorized by the state. Uh, they have a taxpayer identification number. They're basically set up to do this sort of stuff, be the middleman. Um, the Southeast Watershed Alliance is made up of a much larger group of people than us. Um, <coughs> they're dealing with things more associated with the Bay. Um, so this Richard Snow, who's the treasurer, gave us this, this copy of the T9. Um, they would manage the money. The Stormwater Alliance will solicit the uh, proposals, will select who it is, and then that's when the work would actually get, get done. So we're trying to be one step ahead of the MS4 permit when it lands on us, because the clock will literally be ticking. So I have a motion by Phil, seconded by Second. Regina. Does the town manager have anything to say on this? Yep. We're going to get hit with that from my last information by, the end of the, by the end of September. So we need to move as soon as possible. Okay. Motion second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Next one is... Chief Richard Sawyer, Hampton Police Department. Seafood festival preparation to start with.
Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the Seafood Fest, I just wanted to throw that on there to uh, bring the board up to date on the Seafood Fest, but also the many other events we uh, we do host in the town of Hampton. Uh, we are becoming event central uh, for a lot of the, the road races and stuff. I just received another um, inquiries about uh, an event in May. Um, so I just wanted to keep uh, folks updated on the actions we're taking with the police department in coordination with the fire department and public works to make these things uh, as safe as we can. Well, obviously, recent events here and abroad uh, have raised the level of concern dealing with security issues. I don't intend to get into specifics here. I um, just wanted you to know that we are uh, taking measures, particularly with the Seafood Fest, it's our biggest event, uh, to provide for safety of that event, but to make it also a, a, a good event for the people that want to attend. Um, these security measures are ongoing. Uh, we will be going out this week with uh, doing an assessment with the members of the town, but we also have members from the New Hampshire State Police uh, and New Hampshire Homeland Security assisting us with these preparations for this event and others. Um, I know people have noticed occasionally that we have some uh, devices out uh, displayed in the area, the small metal boxes we get a lot of calls for. Those are pieces of equipment we use to make analysis of uh, the condition of the air in those vicinities, just so if we have anything that uh, could be hazardous to us, whether intentional or accidental, we can respond to it very quickly. We have a number of those devices out at our bigger uh, events, and we're assisted by Homeland Security with those items. So I know a lot of people have been calling and asking, and anywhere you go, that they're, they're really concerned about these things. I assure you we are, we are taking every reasonable measure uh, to make our events safe. Uh, including our normal our normal beach operation. Uh, I had the uh, fortune to have lunch uh, the other day with the Commissioner DOT to discuss some of the things we're doing, and I recently had a meeting with Phil Bryce from the State Parks. Same questions, they just want to know what we're doing and what can they do to help. Um, I did open up some discussions about, uh, a lot of discussion about some of that fencing that we use on the 4th of July, about using that season long down at the beach. Now, 1A is a state road. If I, if I need to do it as chief of police for small periods of time, I can under New Hampshire law. But for an extended period, that's something we need, we need to discuss with them and we're collaborative with, uh, very open to it. Uh, we're going to start having some discussions in the fall after we get through our, our, <coughs> our festival season. Uh, and we're being assisted also by the precinct, uh, the HBAC, and Experience Hampton to try to help offset some of the costs of the fencing and some of the things we want to do to dress up the fencing to make it uh, look a little more appealing uh, as opposed to that galvanized aluminum. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention that uh, it's not just the week before an event we set up. We, we plan for these things months ahead of time uh, and we have a regular cycle of those and because I believe because of the job we do in this town that more people want to come to us with these events and we're just making sure that only the right events come to Hampton. So if there are any questions on that I'll certainly try to answer them the best I can. Any questions? Seeing none. Okay. To the traffic issues, um, folks that came in, if you don't mind, I'm going to go off just a little bit on the agenda. A uh, group of folks were from Tide Mill Road. I did have a little discussion out there. I apologize for the noise we made. We went upstairs. Um, global issues, um, same type of issues that we're experiencing out on the Mary Bachelor Road area, the trucks and the speed and those issues. Um, we understand that those are problematic and the perception out there of, of how dangerous they are. Um, what I'm proposing to do with those folks and, and for any group of people in any neighborhood they feel they have similar problems is host meetings at the police department. And I'll bring in the public works folks, fire folks, anything, anybody that can help add to a solution to the problem. Um, I would recommend if you're having these problems, please don't wait to come to a selectman's meeting to bring them up pick up the phone and call the Hampton Police Department as they're occurring so we can address them very quickly. You'd be surprised how often when we get those phone calls that we find the folks that are doing these things in our neighborhoods. So please call us. Let us know. I, I, how many times people say, I didn't want to bother you. That's what you pay us for. You're not bothering us. That's why we exist, to so help you solve those problems. So please give us a call in real time when it's happening. And if you're not getting the proper response, please call down and ask to speak to me, and you will get the proper response. Um, we're not sitting around and hoping it goes away. We want to take proactive action. So in that light, um, 
regarding uh, the issues that came up a couple weeks ago. Uh, did everybody receive my uh, initial email with some statistics and then a follow-up? And I just want to bring some of that up for the folks uh, that may be watching when this issue came up. Um, out in that area, I refer to it as that triangle from Exeter Road going Timber Swamp to Toll Farm and then across to Mary Batchelder and all the way out to the uh, town line with Hampton Falls. The areas are all posted, uh, no through trucking. And we have, over the years, experienced many issues. When I first started with the problem, we experienced the same issues with trucks coming down through those areas. Trying to enforce that can be somewhat difficult um, just because of the, the approaches that are actually lawful to get into the facility at FOSS. I had this discussion with Chief Bill Wren back when I was a lieutenant. The lawful way to enter into FOSS is actually on Route 1, which is problematic. The problem is, is they come off of Exeter Road, the ones that actually follow that route, when they're coming southbound, in order for a, t a tractor trailer unit to make that turn, they have to cross over into the oncoming northbound lane of traffic in order to make that turn successfully. So we have a significant issue we, ha we have to find a resolution to. I understand putting them through the neighborhoods, uh, you know, the answers we're getting from the truck drivers is their GPS systems are telling them to go that way down Timber Swamp Road. And as you make the corner, there's the sign right there. So we're trying to work. Uh, Billy Cummings here, the manager from FOSS, is also here uh, to discuss with you. We have been negotiating with FOSS to find some resolutions. They've been very helpful reaching out to their trucking companies, the GPS companies, but also want to help the town uh, with some signage. And I'll let him address that when he comes up next, uh, what they're willing to help us out with. As far as the activity we've experienced, as you saw in the email, uh, we've been out there uh, since January 1st. I went back to till uh, that Tuesday after the last meeting. We had made 175 traffic stops in that area, not just trucks. I, I look at traffic enforcement as a global issue. It's not just the trucks. It's people speeding. It's people running stop signs. You name the issues that could occur. They happen in that neighborhood like they happen in every neighborhood in town. You know, I understand people say that this has got to stop, okay? The reality is it's not going to stop. We can help curb it. We can help minimize it. But for anybody to believe that we're just going to stop that from happening is not realistic, okay? People are going to do things they're not supposed to do. And in the world I work in, people drive drunk every day. People are using heroin. and aren't, You know, these things are going to occur. We do the best we can with the assets we have to minimize the impact on the community. So moving forward with that, I did give the order to uh, add additional patrols out in that area, and I, I sent you the uh, email on those statistics. I believe there were 17 stops uh, in that area uh, with a number of summonses, and particularly to the truckers. I explained to the officers I, I will not completely remove an officer's discretion as to how he deals with violations. I feel that would be inappropriate. Uh, what I did explain to the officers is that if you choose to give a warning, particularly with the through trucking issue, that you'll have to come to my office and explain why. So I don't believe there were any warnings given in the last several weeks for trucking violations. <laughs> um, I continue to plan, uh, move forward with that program for the time being to try to get that message through the trucking community, if that's one way we can do it. Um, and similarly, down on Tide Mill Road, that order will be going out tomorrow after my discussion with the citizens out in the lobby. Uh, with that, I'll entertain any questions or any concerns from the board. <clears throat> You? I don't I mean I agree with you I don't think that we can completely stop it but I think that I've been out there and I noticed there has been a uh, Hampton cruiser there and hopefully just if they know that there is a uh, cruiser around I mean it, are they all going to FOSS all the uh, routinely the, the, the TT units the only business really out there there are other businesses out there so I can't say entirely it's FOSS but they are probably the largest uh, area of delivery uh, coming off of those roads. We, we tell the officers to inquire where are they going. Um, I'm sure there may have been a, some other folks out there that are getting deliveries, um, but part of the problem is, is we have to come up with a reasonable route for these people to travel to to get to Foss. They're doing business in town, as are the folks of Merrill Industrial. Um, and I just don't think Route 1 is really viable. I, I've, I've experienced it myself coming northbound on Route 1, and here's a TT unit trying to do that swing so they can make the turn. I just, uh, I think we have to take another look at that moving forward. Okay. What are we, are we looking at that now? 
the al- the alternate route. I mean, I, I agree with one hundred percent. Route one. The only fine. alternate route I can come up with, and I know that folks in that neighborhood are not going to be happy with me, uh, but the only alternate route I can think of is as opposed to Exeter Road is when they when they come down Exeter Road from Liberty <clears> Way, <throat> is to take that right onto Toll Farm, and that's a, that's a tough corner also uh, for a TT operator because it almost you make the corner and it kind of cuts back. But watching trucks that have done it, and it's posted no through trucking there, but when you see trucks do it, it just seems more manageable than in its way. But I'm not, a, I'm not a road engineer. I think we need to take a look at that from a number of views. It just seems they don't go out into the other lane to the degree they do on Route 1. That or we have to come up with an approach that they come from the, uh, they come from the south, travel north, and they can make that turn. If they're heading northbound, making the turn off Route 1 is fairly easy. But that trying to take that right turn going southbound is it's impossible to do unless you swing out into the other lane driving those that size truck so i think we have to take a, that's part of this process we got to take a hard look so, at that so are, are you planning to have meetings with the people on public, the i want to talk to public works uh bill cummings is here he's been very helpful uh over the years with anything we have in that area to sit down with them and try to come up with a, uh, a safer if there is a safer way there may not be that may be what we're stuck with i know Having spoken with Bill Wren uh, years ago about this thing, that this was deliberated by previous boards, I, I believe there's even a vote somewhere in our past history directing that that's the entryway and posting uh, Toll Farm Road is no through trucking. So those things that will have to be researched and find out what you know what is actually on the books today as opposed to just a sign and have some other folks that may be more educated in the area of traffic engineering come up and try to help us with a solution. Okay. And in the meantime, you're still going to increase... You're still going to continue the increased patrol yes. down that area. Yes. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, Chief, thanks for your attention. Thanks for your uh, um, highlighting the salient of uh, contacting department heads uh, directly. Uh, it's great if there's a high level of dissatisfaction to come here uh, at this meeting, but uh, the rubber meets the road at the department head and the town manager uh, level, and that's where uh, things are done. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, the Chief Operating Officer for FOSS coming in. Uh, this is a, uh, a FOSS-centric challenge. Uh, the good neighbors that live in these residential areas uh, should not be uh, uh, encumbered in their uh, pursuit of uh, living in a residential neighborhood by uh, dangerous trucking that uh, comes to the, uh, the good business of FOSS. And uh, um, in terms of uh, ingress and egress at FOSS, uh, they have a beautiful corporate office, um, maybe less of that lawn that they have there next to that yellow building uh, um, should be lawn and more of it should be access for trucks. Maybe there should be less uh, people at shift change coming out of that uh, underneath the bridge uh, going down further towards the uh, factory. That rail line is no longer in use. I don't know what the mitigating factors are for uh, um, expanding that, but I think uh, this is a FOSS challenge. This is, should not fall on the shoulders of uh, our department heads, our, our town staff, um, where we're solving FOSS logistics challenges. And uh, um, signs are great, but uh, FOSS needs, in my opinion, and I'm glad uh, the chief operating officer was here tonight, uh, to step up and uh, um, really grab the bull by the horns and lead it and uh, further uh, extrapolate what they have for plans and uh, go additional steps uh, to mitigate this challenge. These people are here. Um, they're raising children. They have quality of lives. I live on one kind of road, and uh, a fire station popped up. School district. Uh, there's 7,000 cars. There's there's uh, ambulances and fire trucks going on, and that's what I signed up for. But folks that are in these residential uh, areas, um, uh, I think FOSS needs to be more, more uh, considerate and uh, more responsive to their needs. And, uh, they can dictate to both you and the board and to uh, the uh, police department on what their solutions to this problem that uh, they're causing in the neighborhood is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> yes, thank you very much for uh, getting all this going. Um, there's a lot of conversation that's uh, coming out now, and I think it's a good thing. Um, I'm hoping that we can... <clears throat> think of a way to uh, so that it works for everyone and FOSS has uh, always been very you know a good taxpayer here in Hampton and offering people jobs and things like that and 
I'm looking to, I'm hoping that we can make everybody happy here. It's a difficult task. It's one of those issues, like I said, everything old is new again, and this is an issue after talking, going back in my history, that this isn't the first time we've been down this road. It's just uh, with the volume we're experiencing of traffic on in this town, on Route 1 particularly, maybe there's a better way we could do it or some of the suggestions mr bean made about expanding the entryway and i've always found billy uh working for us the number of issues we've dealt with out there to be very cooperative and open-minded about what he can do to help so i'm looking forward to having those discussions with him about what we can do well everybody on on toll farm road especially that that upper section towards the exit road has to realize that when uh industrial drive went in there there was going to be trucks going in there mm -hmm. um so that, that part of that road and coming off of Exeter Road, um, that's def I mean, that's part of the way. I mean, when Foss bought the old Timberland building, that helped alleviate some of that traffic out on, on Route 1 because now they could come in through the, through the industrial drive. But being out on the west end of Tim Toll Farm, Timber Swamp, Mary Badgelow, mm -hmm. is not where the truck should be, and I, I think you're addressing that fairly well. As far as the people on, on Tide Mill Road is, um, I understand their problems, I understand their concerns, uh, but that lower end of Tide Mill Road has been industrial for a long time, a lot longer than Hard Arts Way was there. So yeah. those businesses have been there, and those business addresses are Tide Mill Road. So if a truck's going to a Tide Mill Road address, it's pretty hard to say, you can't go there if that's the address that it is and that's what your GPS tells you is. So that's a tough one. And I hope we can work with some of those businesses down there to educate their their people on on uh, how they can get there. But they, they don't have uh, Hard Art Way addresses because they're not on Hard Art Way. Correct. They are on uh, Tide Mill Road. And so I just want people to remember that when that happens is when you bought those houses in that area, those businesses were already there. And they, they've just been doing business just like they have been all along. Uh, it, it, it's better that Hard Art Way got opened up and allows the trucks to go that way. And I think when the trucks find that, they're probably going to want to go Hard Art's Way anyways to stay out of that neighborhood. So if, if they can help assist us with notifying them. But it, it's just a little bit different situation down there versus Mary Bachelor Road and Tibbet Swamp Road. Those businesses aren't on those roads so i just want to make people aware of that and i know you're doing a hard a, a great job and you and it sounds like you've got a plan moving forward to do that but as you said traffic the more it gets the tougher it's going to get and it is what it is yeah and it, the good thing is the community input um is, is vital to us because we look at it from the law enforcement perspective I'm, I'm not living in that neighborhood and when I walk out of my house on Blake Lane, I look at it differently than I do when I'm patrolling in somebody's neighborhood, and, I, and it's vital for us to get that input. And I would just, again, highlight to the folks that have concerns. Um, certainly, I know this board always is open to listening to people, but really start with us. And, uh, and I promise you, if you, you have people that have the similar concerns, we're going to host a, a, a neighborhood meeting. Um, and the more of those we have, I think the more problems we solve, and we do it at that lower echelon, and we just get it done, and we'll come to you with a proposal. If we need something to change with, you know, speed or the way a road is posted, uh, we certainly bring it before the board, but it would be nice to do that as the police, the public works, the fire, and the citizens coming in as a unified front. So you know we did our due diligence trying to make these problems go. Uh, again, I'm not one that believes in absolutes and we can make every problem go away, but we can certainly work harder to minimize the impact on, on the residents. So that's our goal. Absolutely. Okay. Very good. All right. Next person up is... Mr. Chairman. Yes. Did you want to bring up with the chief here, Logan's run? Oh, yes. While we're okay. here, that we had that. Thank you for my that that was pulled off the consent calendar yep. for the uh, permit for Logan's run. What occurred at Logan's run was, I believe the reason what uh, spurred the permit, because usually when you see these permits, they usually come in February, March, April, when the old ones expire. What happened was is the department received a complaint about the uh, level of noise coming out of that establishment uh, with the band playing and music being played outside. Did our research, uh, found that there was no business permit ever sought or issued by the board. Uh, so with that, I directed uh, officers to go up and make notification to the establishment, uh, I believe it was on a Wednesday, 
to let them know that you can't play the music, you need to get the permit, and if you play the music, you're going to be in violation and be summonsed. Uh, that Friday, the band was playing. We got a complaint from the citizen, so the officers went up and issued a summons for the town ordinance violation. So that, I want to get to too many details. That matter is pending before um, the Tenth Circuit Court over in Seabrook at this particular point. Where that goes, I'm not sure. Um, we'll go from there. So I, I believe that's why you're seeing this is an odd, ti oddly timed application, and I believe that's the sequence that went to that. I believe I put on my uh, recommendations that no outside entertainment be permitted at that location as it is abutting uh, residential folks in the back in the condos, and the music tends to carry over apparently over into the neighborhoods on the other side of the businesses uh, on Route 1. Anybody got any questions? And, yeah. Did, in previous years, have they, they had a, a, a entertainment? Or I would have to go. I believe the current owners of Logan's Run have only been there for two or three years. Prior to that, it was a different establishment. So in the two to three years of the current ownership, I don't know the answer to that. I'd have to do some research for you and get back to you. But but after you were, after officers went down there and told them they needed to get one, they still played the next... It was a Wednesday, and keep in mind the timing of it. I don't want yeah. to demonize these people. They seem to be nice folks. It was probably one of those ones... Um, the old days, I used to walk around. Christina would give me a list of people that hadn't applied, and down at the beach, and I would walk. And I remember I had to notify the Ashworth Hotel and probably five or six establishments along Ocean Boulevard in June that they hadn't applied, and it spurred them to get their things in. Um, this is a little bit later in the season, so I'm going to take it that the owner didn't realize um, and give him the benefit of the doubt on that when we notified him on Wednesday. But they were notified on the Wednesday, and the band was playing, I believe, on either Friday or Saturday night when the summons was issued. So, Have you had other complaints down there? Uh, that's the first one that I'm aware of. I'd have to go back and look in the logs, but that's the first time I've heard of a complaint under this ownership. Um, they're generally um, very cooperative with us when we have any interaction with them, so I wouldn't say that this is a, a problem established by anything. It's, it's just a, uh, one of those things. I, I think they forgot to, or didn't know that they had to get a permit, so... I would not recommend against it. I would just say the condition of no outside entertainment be, would be the one uh, that I would like to see enforced. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, it was pulled from the agenda. It's been uh, approved by the police chief, the fire chief, the code enforcement officer. Uh, what is the status of that uh, uh, request this evening? Need to make a motion to approve. For the conditions. With with the conditions, the only the only thing I see is is I have in. Under his description of entertainment, he has outside, and you're saying no outside. No outside entertainment in that area. But my understanding is the band plays inside, but occasionally turns the music on outside. Yeah, it says speaker on the you know, the back deck. Yeah. On a separate, so they can be turned down or off. So, but that's not that part of it's not acceptable to you. It's no outside. Should be no outside entertainment okay. in that area. So I need a motion to accept with the stipulations. By the department heads or the department oh, reviews? Yeah. No outside music being played. Okay. I'll make the motion. Motion second. I'll you start. Know, what? What are you? I'm just saying that, that you know, the other people come in with all plans on how to keep the music down quiet and stuff and how to try to compensate for the loud music and. And this is coming after the fact, and, and, and I know the timing, but if he was told he shouldn't be playing music and then he did play music that Friday, that's kind of, I mean, I don't know, you know, I don't want to... If I could offer, I don't yeah. want to step out, step out of my mm -hmm. place here, but uh, keep, it, keep it in context, yes. Did they violate the town on this? Yes. We cited them for it. It's a violation. I don't feel that that should be grounds to deny the permit to that. Well, if I was sitting in your seat based on the conditions, I'm telling you as Chief of Police, I have no problem with you approving it. A right, second. So a motion and a second. All those in favor? Three. Opposed? Abstaining. Well, I'm abstaining. Is there something here I just don't understand? Okay, so three, three, four, two abstentions. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Next one is Bill Cummings from Foss Manufacturing. Good evening, Bill. Good evening, and thank you for giving me the chance to, to sit here before you. 
Um, <clears throat> the first thing I'd like to say is that nobody at Foss Manufacturing wants trucks driving down Murray <laughs> Bachelor to the Swamp Road. Um, we care very deeply about that, and we regret any inconvenience or any trouble that that, that may have caused. Um, we don't operate our own trucks. Um, we call in outside logistics companies either to come pick up for us or um, <clears throat> in terms of, of customer shipments or to drop off raw materials. Um, many times there could be two or three middle companies involved. By the time that a logistics or a freight forwarder is called, then, it, then they're calling a trucking company, then they're calling a trucker right, to come in. We have um, put out directions um, to all of our customers, to all of our suppliers, um, and to all the logistics companies that we do business with to direct them to come in on 27 and down Toll Farm Road, all right, then turning on to Merrill Drive. Um, uh, there are at least two um, satellite navigation systems that, are, that direct people to Timber Swamp and Mary Bachelor, that being Magellan and Rand McNally. Um, in the case of Magellan, uh, I was able to go on to the internet and actually put a put a note right at that intersection um, to, to to tell people to go the other way. In the case of, of Rand McNally, I've not been able to do that. It doesn't allow me to um, uh, to get in in there and do that. So what we've been trying to do is, when we find an instance where a truck has um, gone the wrong way, and there have been some. Um, I followed a person in once and talked to him. Um, we had a neighbor that followed a, a, a person in and had the um, uh, good sense to come in and talk to me about it, and we dealt with that right away. Um, and then I also found a gentleman that um, was at the uh, T between um, uh, Liberty Lane and 27. <clears throat> The gentleman was in the lane like he was going to turn left. I pulled up right behind him, and he read the sign, and he turned right. And I was able to, to and I followed him right in and, and, first of all, thanked him, and then secondly, um, I interviewed him on what was going on. Um, and that's how I found out about the Rand McNally. Um, and again, we've been unable to, to, to get a note into that. So with that said, um, uh, what I'm proposing, or what we're proposing at FOSS, is, is some signs. Um, I have copies of the signs, if you'd like, um, and um, they're also in the, the email attachment that, um, that I had sent to all of you previously. Um, specifically, um, we'd like to, in the, in the, in the sign that, that I'm putting the most um, faith behind is going to be a sign on Route 27. Um, my proposal had it um, uh, facing the sign facing east, but I think there should be two signs, one facing west also, that specifically says um, uh, trucks to metal drive prohibited from this from this um, from this road. Um, one a no through trucking sign. First of all, it's too late for the trucker. Unfortunately, when they make that turn, the sign's right there, and there's not, not much they can do at that point. Secondly, I'm not sure that all the truckers understand that they're through trucking. Um, they, they have um, uh, their navigation system giving them an address and telling them to take that road. Um, and, and I think that some of them may feel that, 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 that they're actually not through trucking, which may be why they're doing it. Um, I'm not making excuses for them, and again, I don't want them on that road either, as does does everybody at FOSS. Um, so again, I'm proposing a sign that specifically states, if you're going to Merrill Drive, you're not taking this you're not taking this road. Um, I'm proposing a larger sign at the intersection of Liberty Lane and um, in Route 27. There's a sign clearly there right now. Um, I'm proposing a larger one, um, and then uh, <clears throat> for trucks that are leaving Merrill Drive. Um, again, a clear sign right there. There already is a sign that clearly says 95 is, is this way. But again, another, another sign basically saying that, that exiting trucks must turn, turn must right. turn to the right. Um, and again, those signs are in, the, in that, and I have copies of them if, if, if you want. Um, Foss Manufacturing has no problem buying signs. 
Uh, Foss Manufacturing has no problem working with the town. Um, we really don't know the DOT requirements. Um, we certainly in, and have been in touch with the sign company. Um, we've received some uh, or a, um, uh, an estimate for the signs, um, uh, but we have we have no problem purchasing the signs um, to put to put up there. Uh, and again, we regret that this we regret that this has occurred. Um, I will tell you that Hampton Police has contacted us. Um, uh, up until up until about two months ago, we thought the problem had been solved with the sign that was was there now. And um, uh, uh, Deputy Chief Hobbs contacted us, asked us to um, to do something about it, and we began work right away to try to figure out something that we could that we could do. Okay. All right. And again, if there are people here from Drake Side and Mary Bachelor, I just want to. Yeah. Extend our apologies and our concerns um, over this. I'd like to give issue. you a copy. This is a log. Okay. My husband's home pretty much all day. I'm sorry, I didn't make enough for everyone. But this is just some things that we've witnessed. And just for the record, your name and. I'm, I'm Jill Pelletier, and I live in Mary Bachelor. And this has been going on for three years. And numerous phone calls have been made for three years. Uh, for three years, phone calls have been made station. to the police station, and three years later, stopped. here we are in the same okay. station again. Okay. Uh, I will tell you that a very nice gentleman came by Friday. Um, uh, um, he said he lived on Mill Road, but I think he might have a relative or somebody that lives in that area. Um, he actually followed a followed a truck in. It was nice enough to to bring that to my attention. And then we immediately brought that to the uh, logistics group and actually went to the trucker, all right, and told the trucker's company that if this guy can't follow instructions, that we don't want him sent in again. Um, and I'd be more than happy to leave you uh, my phone and my extension so that, it, and again, I want the truck stopped also. Um, but if there is someone there that, that sees one, um, uh, we'll talk to the driver right at the I'm not sure the drivers are taking this as serious as we are because just over the weekend I was outside doing the yard work and a tractor trailer came going towards Toll Farm and he slowed down because I was on my front yard and I told him this is a no truck road, you shouldn't be here. He laughed at me and he kept yeah, on driving. Yeah, that's what they do. And they then two hours, yeah, they wave. And two yeah. hours later he came back and I was still on my yard yeah, yeah, you're gonna and he kept on driving. I'm very sorry sir. about that. Yeah. You sir, if you're going to speak so it's fair to people in, on the audience, I'm sorry. you need to come up to the microphone. Uh, I think we've caught what your, your drift is, and, and, I, and we know the, the plight that's out there. And I think uh, Bill's here, and he, he's. Uh, we've heard from the police chief. We know that they've had some stops out there. They, they know they're trying to do it. Bill has brought forth a proposal. Uh, have you got anything? No. So um, I think if we have you get together with... Either the police chief or the both, both public, and public works. works, police okay. and public works director. Okay. Uh, to see about, I think the signs are a great way to start. Okay. Obviously, we let the people know. Does anybody else going on the board? Yeah, I, I do. If, yeah. It's my turn, Ben and uh, Mr. Chief Operating Officer. Thanks for coming in. Great company. Uh, uh, in, you know, parking, traffic. Uh, they have legitimate concerns. Uh, you do have a great company, and you're very responsive. Um, uh, just, just a couple of questions. I'm, I'm on the on the uh, computer right now. I'm looking at your your office. Do you own the yellow office building both to the north and south? As far we as own the office building to the south. Okay. Um, I don't think we own the yellow building to the north and anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at that means of egress and ingress that the chief talk, talked about. There is a tree there. I don't think these people would care if you cut down a tree on Route 1 um, to uh, um, mitigate that that traffic issue um, on, on Route 1 uh, because there's plenty of room for you to double that entranceway. Uh, there's a boatload of impervious uh, uh, asphalt behind that office building. I know that area. Mm -hmm. um, I worked at your company 30 years ago. Thanks for the job. And um, <laughs> yeah, um, so I, I think that's an option. I think um, <clears throat> is some a little bit of logistics background. Uh, you look at this calendar that the Pelletiers have, have dropped off. You've got Sunday deliveries. You've got deliveries all through the day. I 
know, uh, many hospitality uh, uh, venues will not accept deliveries uh, past a certain hour. There's trucks early in the morning. I think if you're more aggressive um, in terms of uh, that Route 1 egress and ingress, Route 1, people expect traffic. I think uh, if you uh, uh, dovetail your um, manufacturing <coughs> needs with deliveries, uh, with uh, your production cycles, I think these people's problems can virtually go away. And I think that uh, uh, you'll be a much better corporate neighbor. And I would encourage you, uh, and this is my opinion, uh, to uh, um, widen the horizon on, on your, your uh, solutions to this challenge. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick? Yeah, uh, you know, I think it's great that you come in. It's great that you've got the, the concern and stuff. I think the chief came in and he talked about it. And I, and I, I think, seriously, a meeting of all the parties concerned <coughs> Is, is a good start to get this thing rolling. I agree, you know, that maybe you can look at the Route 1, maybe expand it. I don't know if that's possible. You know, it's just not good egress any place, I guess, really. But I think a meeting between the, the neighbors, the chief, the public works, FOSS, I think will be a good step. And I think those signs are a good step to get it rolling. So I think it's a good beginning. And I, and I think we need to solve the problem. You know that, too. You want to solve the problem. They want to solve the problem. We want to solve the problem. So we'll solve the problem. So. <coughs> yeah, I agree with Jim. I think getting together and you, the police chief, Chris, uh, Chris Jacobs, and yeah, I mean, we definitely would prefer if there's a way to have the trucks stay on Route 1, 95, Route 1, 27, and stay off the residential roads. That would definitely be the best bet for everyone. Um, we will certainly look at the Route 1 option. Um, the one thing I want to just, just say is that the Route 1 option for FOSS isn't going to completely solve the problem because there are other trucks going to other companies in the Merrill Industrial Park. There are also trucks going to um, uh, the brewery, the Smarty Nose Brewery, that's down off a of tall farm. And again, I don't want to, uh, we, we, we will look at it, and, and certainly that would that would do something with the traffic, but that's not going to, that's not going to completely eliminate the, the, the trucks on tall farm. Obviously, this is not just a FOSS problem down there, is, like, is what you're saying. FOSS is probably the biggest generator of it. We agree not, with that, yes. Right, but it's not the entire problem, and I, I agree. So uh, if you want to get a hold of the uh, police chief, yep. he'll, he'll set up a meeting with you, the public works director, and if the people in the audience, you get a hold of the police chief, and, and they'll let you know when that meeting is. And, and again, I'll, I'll give you my card um, before we leave here tonight. And again, um, if and as, and again, there's no requirement on your part, but certainly um, if, if there's someone at home and they see a, and they see a truck going down, um, if we get a call, we will, we will go to the driver, and the driver won't wave at us or smile at us or something like that, or they won't be back. Um, so um, uh, we're, we would commit to do that. Okay, thank you. And that being said, it may not be a FOSS truck. Right. So it could be going to one of the other businesses there also. Mr. Chairman, yes. I, I would think that with the police chief, those other businesses should be invited to this meeting. Sure. That's probably uh, a good idea. Somebody Agreed. knows and all businesses. Yep. That's probably a good idea that has trucking in there. there should be invited. And if it is another business, I've got no problem calling that other business. <laughs> all right. So, um, uh, again, we don't want them either. And quite frankly, truckers don't want to be on that road. All right. So... So anyway, okay. um, unless you have anything else for me, I want to oh, thank you. Thank and, you, and, though. Can I come in? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next one is Brian McCain. If he can hear us out back there. Oh, look at that. Ask and you shall receive. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good evening. Oh, almost lost it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been good. Um, First on the agenda is hiring of a part-time media coordinator. This would be a 20 hour a week, $20 an hour position um, with a net increase of to the salary line, I guess, of uh, $12,200 per year. Uh, if you do the math, 20 hours a week times uh, $20, $400 times 52, uh, 20,800, but with this position, we'd be eliminating our programmer slash technical advisor uh, 
which is around $8,600 a, a year. Plus, it would be actually be more taken off because it would eliminate a lot of my time. Um, benefits to this is an improved program development. Uh, this person can do work for the rec department, uh, for the DPW, for the building, um, creating programs, uh, commercials, um, um, you know, to inform, like for the rec department, you can use it for upcoming events, such as camps, uh, leagues, and um, um, whatever else you need to uh, get out to the public. And for the DPW, you can t inform on road closures, upcoming repairs, um, and um, anything like that. So, sort of like the people are used to with. Channel 13? Channel 13, exactly. Like they do. They do the same thing. He goes out and he informs, you know, this is what's going to go on at the school. We want to do this the same thing with the town. Uh, this person also, um, uh, another benefit would be re researching and implement implementing new technology opportunities. Uh, going to shows. Uh, it's one thing we can't do. There's a lot of free seminars. Uh, a lot of free trade shows in a local area that are all held during the day, and we can't, none of us can go because we all work. It'd be great, it'd be a great benefit for the town to go to these, catch up on the, the latest technology, and uh, see if it's something that would help us out. And also, uh, assisting with the transition to high, high depth if uh, that goes through. This is something he could train with the installers and then in turn train the uh, the staff because right now the installers again work during the day during the dust, so it's hard to get together to uh, to train um, and this person would be available during normal business hours during the day so if you have a, a citizen that has a concern about what's on TV what's not on channel 22 they can actually talk to somebody right now they I do get calls at work which sometimes I can take sometimes I can't um, I just think it's it's it's. I think we've reached the point where we need to move ahead, and to move ahead. Right now, we're. I don't believe Channel 22 is going to move any. This is where we're going to be, and this is where we're going to stay the way we are without someone in here to move us ahead. Any questions from the board? Any? Yes. Are you requesting this now, or is this going forward in the spring? When it's no, I'd like to request it now so we can develop a, a uh, we can get a uh, qualifications. Uh, you know, if it's not going to go through, I'm not going to waste my time with that. Okay, and can you explain uh, the fiscal impact and fiscal ramifications, your funding source? Is this a cost to the taxpayers? Is the no, this is not a cost to the taxpayer. It comes out of the Channel 22 fund. Mm -hmm. Uh, that has been increased, and I believe this is a good way to spend the money uh, to improve programming, because we have limited programming, especially this time of year, we have, there's not much on. We have repeats and repeats and repeats, whereas uh, this person can be out, uh, working, like I said, working with the DPW uh, on, well, we, we're going to have to replace the sewer. Well, he can go down there and, and talk to the DPW, and, and, ex and the, he can explain to the public uh, what's going to happen, and that can be played over and over, instead of having him have to come in front of you and explain it once. He can, somebody can access this uh, anytime they want, and they can see what where their money's going. Same with the fire department. There's a new engine coming, and uh, people want to know where their money goes. He'll go over, interview if possible. You know, it's all up to the uh, the chiefs. Interview them, show them the equipment, and this is where your money's being spent. And again, there's no. It all comes out of the uh, cable fund, which is uh, fees from the uh, from Comcast. Okay, and so there's there's no impact. You've got this money in house. It, there's a no taxpayer expense. You're talking about the part time position. There'll be no benefits. Is that be correct? no benefits. No. It's twelve thousand two hundred dollars a year for the position. Right. And then you're talking. Are, have you discussed the laptops already? I have not. No, okay. that's next. Do, are they all? To, is this all one? To no, pass? no, that's the These second. These are separate issues. Yes. Okay. So no impact. The money's in house. It's from the cable company. Right. No benefits. No additional costs. No, just the, the the twelve thousand two hundred. That's in um, 
losing the uh, the program. He'll be doing the programming. He'll be doing all the technical Thank you. advising. Okay. I'll make that motion. Well, I wanna, does Fred, do you have anything first? There's more than sufficient income to do this. Um, right now, the cable committee is taking in about $100,000 a quarter from Comcast. So this would be paid for completely from Comcast money. So I'll make that motion. So motion. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor? I'm going to abstain. Four, four, one abstention. Okay, uh, the next one is a uh, budget request. Uh, we need to replace uh, two laptops and one desktop computer. The two laptops, one will be, uh, one's for the programmer or the new media coordinator, and the other one I take. And the reason I, I have this and he has it, I do, some, I do some editing and such, but also I can control the channel from home. If somebody were to call and say the channel's out, I can, reboot it. Um, uh, I did give you a, um, a uh, description of what it is, and I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not a computer wizard here, so, but uh, it was put, this was put together by the IT department, and he, he, he suggests this is what we need. Uh, each um, laptop is estimated cost around $1,700, no more than that. And the um, the tabletop, which will replace the one inside the computer, the, the control room, uh, is sixteen hundred dollars. And there's an external hard drive that will uh, hold up hold all the uh, uh, video, and that's one hundred thirty five dollars for a, what is it? A four TB hard drive. Any questions from the board? Regina, I don't have any questions now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You'll comply with the uh, purchasing uh, policy in yes. the town? Yes, yes. Okay, and, and while we're talking, do you want to throw in the uh, annual clothing budget for 500 as well? Yes, I would like to uh, put that in also. I'd like to, uh, we, we're we still, we're sharing clothes right now. <laughs> uh, so we haven't bought any clothes. Since you wash them in between? Well, we give them to people, yeah. Um, we just haven't, we just haven't come forward with it yet. So we'd like to uh, have a budget of uh, $500 a year to just get some clothes. We're always changing people, and uh, we're not talking extravagant. We're just talking shirts and, and maybe a jacket for outside use. And people, and you do outside programming. We do right? outside. Yeah, we yeah. do the Christmas parade. We do we do games. We do uh, we're going to go do the talent show. We do stuff like that. Yeah. And so more. Uh, pending further discussion, five thousand one hundred thirty-five for laptop uh, apparatus and uh, thirty-four hundred for the Q video unit and five hundred for clothing. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Rusty's in favor, I think. And just as a quick update on the HD, I did get another bid. Well, I haven't got it yet, but it's coming in, so that's two. And that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Oh, sorry. Town manager's report. Uh, minutes. Oh, minutes. Oh, minutes. A few seconds. <laughs> Okay, the minutes of the August 8th meeting. I move that we approve them. Motion to approve them. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Now the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm going to skip item one because our public works director went into extensive dissertation on the paving program, which is pretty near completion. <clears throat> I will say that all the streets that were approved by town meeting will be done uh, when this program is done, except for Acorn. Uh, which we believe is a private road. We're getting town council, <coughs> excuse me, to finish researching that. We have already researched it, but we're having concurrent opinion from him. Uh, the fact that since it's a private road, we can't pave it. So, but we will take some action uh, if it is declared to be a private road uh, to make sure that it continues to be plowed by having an emergency lien designated for that. So these people will not be without those services that they've had for a number of years. Um, I want people to pay attention. Uh, we've talked about this at the last couple of meetings. Uh, the walk restaurant no parking area is currently in effect. And the state has painted lines to mark out the areas where parking is not permitted. <clears throat> I don't want anybody getting a ticket because they don't understand where it is. Take a look when you go down there. It's, it's going to be obvious once you look. There are signs posted. I just 
I just feel bad. People have used that area for a long time, and the state decided because of complaints received from various citizens that it was a bad place to park, and they have eliminated that parking. Um, for those of you who have not paid your dog license fees yet, please, I beg of you, please come in and pay them. Uh, the sooner you do, the less your state fines will be by statute. Uh, and I will admit that um, when we get to the end of August, uh, the police department is going to start summoning people to court because that's what the law says they have to do. And we just assume not have them do any of that. So uh, please come in and pay those fees and get your dog license for the year. Uh, August 29th is the last day for seed f Seafood Festival permits. Uh, please make sure they're in here by Wednesday the 24th by 5 p.m. so we can put them on the agenda. Uh, and please send a self-addressed stamped envelope with them so we can send the application back to you. Uh, construction continues on the new water lines on Lafayette Road and Park Avenue. They're just about finished. They've indicated they will be finished before the, the opening of school, and they're working very hard on that project. Um, the American Legion, and this came in today, the American Legion is requesting uh, permission to uh, hold the Hit the Beach, which they do every year. This will be the sixth year they've done it. Um, excuse me, ninth year they've done it. Uh, they would, as usual, they would like to, uh, they haven't asked for this, but I will ask for them. They would like to have three or four spaces in the, the parking lot at the corner of uh, uh, High Street and, and Route 1A. Uh, we always give them three or four spaces there for people to park at no, at no cost. And the state always gives them a couple of places in front of the, the area for handicapped individuals. So um, this is going to be the 26th, which is the... Uh, that's Friday. Set, no, is it Friday or Saturday? It's Friday. Uh, it'll be uh, at t the 18th Street uh, ramp coming down there at the beach. And uh, as I say, this is the ninth year that that has happened. So they, I'm asking for them if we would give them the same things that we have given them the last nine years. Uh, which is important, I think, those folks. Uh, well, without objection, I think we, we can give them that. So. You need a motion for that or anything, no? Uh, well, not really, no. As long as you tell me it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So, it's not a problem. Uh, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. The, the, the activity is going to go on. Uh, I'm going to give this to the chairman. This is a delegate voting authorization for the NHMA Legislative Policy Conference. That has to go into uh, to Concord. And uh, this is uh, for their conference they have? That's correct. And uh, can we br I, can we bring this up next week? Sure, absolutely. And the old business. Absolutely. And then we will uh, we will discuss what their uh, their their recommendations yeah. are and their proposals. And then uh, if we've got anybody that's on the board that's interested in going, they can bring forth our. I'll put it back on the agenda, and then you will have it next week. Okay. And there are four policies that are being enacted. We also have uh, a number of items that, from Primex that I'm going to put on next week's agenda dealing with uh, a request for us to give them a three-year extension. Um, I'm going to tell you that I'm, I'm not in favor of that at this point because uh, they're talking about a 9% increase at the maximum of each of those years. Uh, I think we need to do a little more investigation on that, and we'll have some information back for you on that particular item. If anybody is interested in the plans to uh, construct, the state's plans to reconstruct and, and pave uh, Route, 1, Route 1 from uh, Seabrook all the way down to Park Avenue, I have a copy of the plans. Anybody wants to see them, I certainly have them for your review. Now, we've been talking about that for a while now. When, yeah. when do they propose to do that? Uh, they're still waiting, I believe, for their federal permit uh, for, solid, for the uh, wetlands. Once that's granted, they're going to start work immediately. It's going to be this fall. Okay. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for the chairman, uh, for the manager? <laughs> I'm good, Mr. Chairman. I'm good. You're either promoting him or demoting him. Yeah. <laughs> Phil? Uh, yes, sir. Is there a deadline on the uh, Primex uh, response, Mr. Welch? Not yet. Um, they've given us some time to re read it and review it, and, and I've just received it. So uh, I don't think that... Uh, even if we had a deadline on it, their position has generally been to extend that until the board has an opportunity to consider it. And, and uh, with uh, the, the chairman and board's uh, permission, I'd like to work with uh, you and Jamie and the finance director on that. Very good, sir. Thank you, sir. Very good. Uh, 
Thank you, Rick. No, thank you. Thank you. Old business. <clears throat> Anybody have any old business? Or new business? Closing comments. Summer's coming to an end. I just want to remind people that the primary election in September, yeah. uh, September 13th, will be at Marston School. So people have to realize that if they go to vote, it's at Marston School. Now, the general election in November will be at Winnicunit. So, but the primary election on September 13th will be at the Marston School this year. Motion to adjourn. Take a motion to adjourn at uh, 2035. Well said, Sailor. Seconded. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous.